Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to give it a few more minutes to let some people come in before we start. Okay, everyone, good afternoon. I think we can get started now. Um, so thank you so much for everyone who's joined so far. So good afternoon from Toronto and welcome to the Personal Branding and Developing Your Professional Online um, Presence Workshop. Um, this event has been done by Coffee in um, conjunction with KPMG. My name is Jennifer Amankwa and I'm the VP for Programming here at Coffee. I have a presentation to show you for those of you who don't know who Coffee are, so just give me one second. Okay, so who are Coffee? So the Canadian Association of Urban Financial Professionals, Coffee, is a member-based resource organization providing a link between corporations and black communities through innovative programs that facilitate economic growth and educational opportunities. We've been going on for 20 years now and we've established ourselves as a catalyst for excellence for the advancement of black professionals in the Canadian economy. So what's our vision? Our vision is to have a Canadian economy where black people are active, influential and leaders. What's our mission? To develop black professionals by partnering with organizations to strengthen a pipeline of black talent, investing in professional development for our members, 
and providing a network to foster the economic empowerment of the black community. So who are our partners? Here are the people that we work with, KPMG are there too. We're very active on social media, so please do follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. We also do have a Slack channel too. So regarding membership, if you are interested in becoming a member, um, KPMG employees are free, so your um, membership is complimentary. Contact um, Tanika Smith and also Alex Reed if you are interested in becoming a member. And for everyone else who's outside, if you want to share the word about Coffee, if you are a professional, um, it's $150 per year. For students, it's $50. And you can sign up at coffee.ca. So as a member, what do you get? Um, complimentary speaker uh, series access, professional development workshops such as this, exclusive, exclusive membership only events. And then we also have member discounts with strategic partners. If you have any questions, you can email us at membership at coffee.ca. But remember, your membership is free. Contact Tanika Smith and also Alex Reed. So I'm going to introduce our speaker for today. So Charmaine Bryan. So Charmaine is the founder of Charmaine Bryan Image Consultant, helping mid-level professionals communicate their brand to advance in their career. She provides individual coaching and group programs to elevate their appearance, their behavior, communication, and also digital presence. She's a certified image and corporate consultant, author, speaker, and she's collaborated with a lot of organizations such as Rakuten Kobo, um, Ontario Real Estate, Coffee, Keller Williams Realty Solutions, and many more. She's also appeared on TV. She's been on Living 365 T TV Network, She's been on the radio at Radio Region and also 360 FM. She has, 300, she has sorry, 15 years ex experience working in the non-for-profit public sectors and most recently in education policy, research marketing, communications, fundraising, corporate sponsorship and also project management. Charmaine is currently serving on the board of Canadian Association of Urban Financial Professionals as a director of social media. So today's event, um, Charmaine will talk for about an hour. She has a presentation to show you, which is awesome. And then for 30 minutes, we'll give you the chance to ask some questions. You can see in the chat, all you have to do is type your question in the chat and I'll be managing that and we can save that till the end. Um, so without further ado, Charmaine, take it away. Thank you, Jennifer. Just going to share my screen and present. Just bear with me a moment. Oh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. For joining us. Um, personal branding, developing your professional online presence. I feel like in this time, it is definitely a timely topic. We're all working from home. We're all communicating via our laptops. And we are all looking at many squares when we are meeting with our colleagues. Personal branding in particular is um, very key um, at this moment of time, um, especially when you think about how, if you want to advance in your career, it's really thinking about, well, how can you um, develop that brand so that you are seen as leadership material and that you can move up and advance either in the organization that you're in or perhaps move, move to another organization. Uh, I also feel like this is timely because I'm not sure how many of you heard the news recently about the um, MP um, from Quebec who was actually caught on. Um, he had his webcam on but didn't realize and was caught getting changed after a um, run. Um, and he was broadcast into the House of Commons getting changed or with no clothes on. So. You know, it's really being careful about your online presence and personal brand, um, especially with so many of us being tied to our laptops, it feels like these days, or our computers and screens and tablets. So it's just, I just wanted to make sure that although it's very key at the moment, it's making sure that you know when your camera is off and it's only on when it's appropriate for you. So what is a personal brand? 
Well, according to Jeff Bezos, your personal brand is what everyone says about you when you're not in the room. So think about what would you like people to say about you when you are not there? How do you want to be portrayed? And that really is your personal brand. And you do have control of your personal brand. So why develop it? Well, the most important part of developing a personal brand is because you get to control the narrative. Think about it. If you put, put something out there in terms of how your personal brand is portrayed, that means you get to control what is being said about you. I mean, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean you can um, know what someone will be saying behind your back. But the idea is if you um, get in front of the narrative, it means that it's more than likely being told by someone else. So you don't really want to give someone else that opportunity to define what your personal brand is. You get to decide what, you, what you're known for. You get to decide what you're bringing to the table, what your skill sets are, what your value proposition is. As I, as I said, it's really about what people are saying about you. But I believe it's about getting on top of it so that once um, you're consistent and developing this message, people will always revert to that when they're talking about you. I mean, you can never... Um, you can never put down the naysayers. You know, they're always going to be there. But I think as, as long as you are pulling out a personal brand that you believe in and you care about, it will, it will be something that's represented and most people will take that on board. So that's really why it's so important to develop a personal brand. So, okay, so you may be thinking, you know why to develop one, but how do you go about it? Well, firstly, you need to start with your why. Why do you want a personal brand? Why do you want to start thinking about your professional presence? I mean, I think probably a lot of people might be thinking, well, I work, I work for a company. Why would I be bothered with thinking about a personal brand? You know, it's the only brand I need to really think about is the organization that I'm working for. Isn't a personal brand for... Um, for famous people or people who own businesses. Well, I would disagree with that. Um, your personal brand, as I said before, is how you can get on, how you can get on top of the narrative that's said about you. So think about what your why is. Maybe it is because you want to um, show up with credit, you want to be shown to be credible, influential. Be, be known as an authority, a thought leader. Um, perhaps it is because you do want to advance in your career, or maybe it's that you want to um, get onto a corporate board. It could even be that you do want to step out and um, start your own business one day. There's so many reasons why. And when you're thinking about developing your personal brand, that is where you begin. Think about what your why is, because that is what keeps you grounded and keeps um, getting that message out there constantly when you keep going back to that why. The second um, thing to think about when you're developing your personal brand is Think about what are your values and your beliefs. And when I say values, it could be family, it could be community, it could be a number of things that you like doing. Just think, think about those. It could be faith, it could be spirituality, it could be so many things. So, I mean, and there's so many values and beliefs that you, that you may have. I mean, I would say write them all down and think about out of these things, what are my important to me um, decide what your top values are and from there go on to decide um, who you want to show these values to because you may have many values and beliefs but you don't necessarily want to show them to the whole world so you decide what values that you want to make public and then once you um, decide on that you craft the message that speaks to who you are what you're doing um, why you're doing it. It's almost like an elevator pitch, so to speak. So you've always got that in mind. Write it down, practice it. It's like a 30-second defying what your personal brand is, what your value 
themselves are. And it's certainly something that I've done. I mean, Jennifer did read out, I guess, my um, my personal brand message. I help mid-level professionals communicate their brand to advance in their career. And that's something that that did take a while um, to to craft. So it doesn't come overnight. So don't worry if you don't necessarily get it straight away. And it can evolve over time as well. So take that in mind that you can always be consistently working on your brand and that's okay. And once you have gotten to a stage where you like um, where your personal brand is, you can then start thinking about sharing that message every chance you get. Be consistent with it. Tell people about it. Share it on social media. Talk to someone about it. I mean, it's great to share it because when someone else understands what your brand is, then it makes it so much easier because then they're going to spread the word for you. As I said, it's what someone says about you when you're not in the room. So once you get clear on that message, once other people know what your brand is, it just makes it so much more easier. And as I said, being consistently repetitive with that messaging really is to um, learning about your personal brand and putting it out there in the world. So once you've decided what your personal brand is, you're then thinking about your found, that is your foundation now, you've got that, you know, as I said, write it down, you know, have that, have that, keep it somewhere um, so that you can practice it before you learn it by heart, look at it every day, um, write it if you if you journal or if you have it as a screensaver or you have it on your wall in front of your desk it's always great to have it there just so that you remember that you are giving that consistent message out so before you're going into meetings or before you go online so let's move on now to um, LinkedIn and how to build your um, online presence on LinkedIn and LinkedIn is one, it is the professional social media platform um, to build a personal brand. I mean, and there are other ones that you are probably on. You know, there is so many others, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, um, TikTok. There's so many, but uh, LinkedIn is the, the one that is known as the professional um, networking site. And I, if you are not already on LinkedIn, um, which I'm sure most people are. Um, it, it's a great idea to get on LinkedIn. Um, another great one um, for networking, um, I believe, for professionals is actually Clubhouse. Um, but I'm not really going to go into Clubhouse today. I will focus on LinkedIn because, as I said, you know, that's that's a great one for you to really build your online presence. And the reason why... Um, you should be thinking about LinkedIn is because you can build your professional network, especially as we are all working from home. We're all working remote. We're no longer in the office where we can have those informal chats like we used to. It's now all about being online and LinkedIn is the place. And so many people are really open to connecting on LinkedIn. It's a great place to showcase and share your knowledge. So many people are doing it. And in fact, I say so many people are doing it, not a lot of people are doing it. So if you who wants to um, create content or even indeed, I, I'll, I'll speak about that in a little while, or even indeed, if you are um, commenting on posts, it's a great way to showcase your knowledge because a lot of people are not doing it. So it's a great opportunity to stand out and build that professional online presence visibility you get a lot a lot of visibility on linkedin if you use it the right way it is as i said it's an amazing platform it is one of my favorite social media platforms and i've really gotten a lot of that of linkedin i would say especially in the last year with the pandemic if you've not been someone who's particularly who wants to uh, reach out or put yourself out there it's 
it's a great way to start small. And I certainly will go into that a little bit more. You can build your credibility and your reputation on LinkedIn. As I said, if you want to be seen as a thought leader, it's an excellent way to show up and comment on posts. And it's a really, really great platform to develop deep relationships. Not just the case of you are just connecting with people and you're just building those numbers. It's about so much more than that. You can, if you really use LinkedIn the right way, you can really develop amazing relationships. And certainly something that I have taken a lot more seriously in the last few years. And I have met some amazing people on LinkedIn and not just here in Canada, all over the world. So it, you don't need to just restrict it. The great thing about it is that you're not restricting it to where you live and you can build that professional network international and globally. So how can you get your LinkedIn profile to stand out? First things first, I think LinkedIn had a reputation in the past of it was an online resume. And so much of that has changed now. As I said, it is definitely seen more of a social media platform and before it was kind of seen as more for people who are looking for jobs, they had their online resume and there wasn't much more to it. But in recent years, it really has grown to be a platform where people are creating content, they're sharing great content. You know, there's great discussions going on on LinkedIn. So as I said, it is a really, really good platform and you can create a profile to stand out. So firstly, your profile when you're thinking about your profile, establish that's um, given the perceived experience of you. Um, so firstly, do you have a photo on LinkedIn? If you don't have a photo on LinkedIn, run to go and do it after this session. Because honestly, if you want people to connect with you and they don't see that you don't have a photo, the likelihood of them connecting is slim and they may not trust you, they may think that you're a scammer. You know, there's so many things that go on in people's minds when they don't see a photo. Um, I have a client um, who he didn't have a photo for a long time on LinkedIn, and I encouraged him to get a photo. And it was amazing after he to how many more connections and um, right connections that he was getting on LinkedIn. And it was simply because he he didn't, he didn't want to put a photo on there because he didn't want to put himself out there. And I can understand that. It can be nerve-wracking putting yourself out there online, especially if you are not a social media person. But as is is definitely worthwhile doing it if you want to build your personal brand and your online presence. And it's um, LinkedIn introduced. Um, and audio names. Um, this came out last year. So what audio names is where um, you get to actually pronounce your name. There's a, a recording. So if you've got a name that people find hard to pronounce or they often pronounce it wrong, that's your opportunity to do a recording so then someone can listen to your name, how your name's pronounced. So when they meet you, they know exactly how it's pronounced. The, um, of LinkedIn. So this is um, a great section where you can showcase your content. And this can vary from whether you've written articles, blog posts, um, if you've recorded or you've done any presentations or you've got a carousel of slides that you want to show off, or perhaps maybe you've done a podcast interview that you want to showcase. This is a great um, this is a great feature that LinkedIn rolled out that you can really showcase your expertise. Um, so highly recommend using that section, highlighting anything that you professionally, because when someone comes to view your profile, you know, that's a great way. That's it is it's your instant online portfolio. If you don't have a website, you know, that is right there that you can showcase your content. The headline. Um, what I would suggest about that is what LinkedIn does when you are in typically resorts to your um, defaults to your um, your your latest um, your current job as the headline. If you don't necessarily want that as the headline, it could be that you want something. Else. Um, LinkedIn has um, 
they've got that they increase the character so you can put more than just what your job title is if you do numerous things like mine um if you looked at if you looked at my linkedin profile you know i have um image consultant speaker author i also have digital marketer i also have um i also have um content creator so um i've really um rolled out the different things that i do so people can see what i do and because linkedin has given that real estate of so many characters make use of it if there are so many different interests that you want to showcase people on linkedin the about section of LinkedIn is really really important um people who are really interested in learning more about you if they've got that far on your profile this is great real estate to really showcase who you are and again there's there's so many characters it's it's a huge section so really do take some time to write it out and again it's a process you know you may write one put it up maybe a few months six months down the line 12 months down the line it may look different and you may do a rewrite I've rewritten this my about section so many times so it, it's not something that you need to get right straight away it's just really thinking about what it is that you want to tell people so you know don't make it sound like a cover letter because then that's not really going to be interesting to people who are reading about you they've come to find out about you and it's a great way to showcase who you are um it's not so it's not really what you did but it's really showcasing what you do now because what you did you know you can talk about when you're listing your job so it's really talking about what you're doing now and it's it's articulating the problem that you solve so that's whether as problem that you're solving on your team as a leader um if you are um if you're running a business or you want to um, run a business it's thinking about what you solve and how you can help them because that's what someone's interested in who you help how you can help them really get clear on the about section and as i said that's not just about uh if you have a business if you're working for someone you're helping your team dot your organization solve a problem and whoever you're doing business with um you are solving that problem for someone so lighting that and talking about your experience um as i said it's it's a it's um a big opportunity to really who you are um as i said linkedin is a great platform because it is your online portfolio to showcase your professional um resume but not in the traditional resume sense it's going much more beyond that that you're not restricted as you are for a job and you've and you've got to abide by um what the job requirements are this is linkedin is you can put whatever you want on there so as i said um definitely think about that and um also get into what should work with you um really showcasing that so that they know when they um come to your about section um it's really being clear on who it is and why you can help them and why they should work with you and what's so what's particular about you so i've talked about the profile and how to have a stand out profile and as i said i mean i haven't talked about it other aspects but that's something to get you started for now the next part i want to speak about is um showing up on linkedin i mean i'm not sure you um are coming how how you are showing up on linkedin you know are you someone that goes in you scroll the timeline because it's very easy to just get on and keep scrolling 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 you know reading messages reading posts and time consuming if you know if if that you know it can be time consuming and a time suck and it doesn't need to be that way you can still add value on linkedin and get value out of linkedin without um without spending the time scrolling so this is some ways if you wanted to say spend 10 minutes a day on linkedin and really get some value out of it so firstly 
you know, as I said, you know, try not to scroll mindlessly. Instead, actively engage with people because that's where the magic is. That's where um, you develop that online presence. Um, so firstly, aim to leave some thoughtful comments on three to five posts per day that you find interesting. Um, so if you see something that someone's that someone in your um, connections or indeed a second de degree connection, because what's great about LinkedIn is that even if you're not connected to that person, if someone has commented or liked that post um, and they're connected, if it's a second or third degree connection, um, that will show up. So it's a really fantastic way to build your network of people who are not immediately in your network. So if you find something interesting, whether it's someone who's a first degree or a second degree or indeed a third degree connection and they've posted something that's interesting, leave a comment on their post. Um, but not necessarily like think like make a comment that's a different perspective um, to what they've said. So rather than great post, you know, really think about leaving a thoughtful comment that adds some value to the post. It really does make a huge difference. And um, once you've done your five to five posts, then you can go on and like maybe a few more five to eight posts. They could be posts or they could be different posts. The reason why I say comment on posts and like posts is because once LinkedIn sees that you are liking posts of particular content, LinkedIn will show you more of that content. Because sometimes I remember I was speaking to someone recently who she really didn't value LinkedIn because she just didn't like it as a platform. Um, I think because she just found that the people in her feed um, didn't seem to be that engaging. And I said, well, Perhaps it's your connections that you're following um, or it's maybe your particular, um, you know, the content that LinkedIn is showing you. The algorithm is just they keep showing you that that isn't interesting to you. And then I actively told her to go out and look for uh, people, interesting posts um, on LinkedIn, because the more that you engage with those posts, the more that LinkedIn will show you similar posts of similar people. If you wanted to do even a little bit, you wanted to spend 20 minutes a day on LinkedIn, the magic really happens. Um, actually, what I didn't say about commenting on people's posts before was that um, if they are people who, who are not on your, who are not in your network, if you comment on their posts and their thoughtful comments, you know, they're, they're more likely to probably come and check out your um, profile. And if it's someone interesting, it may be that either you initiate a connection because you kind of said, I really liked your post, um, and then you can connect with them, or indeed they may look at your profile and connect with you. So, you know, that's one way to really grow your um, network on LinkedIn. Another way is to continue commenting on posts but also commenting on, you know, if when once you've commented on a, a, an interesting post and you left a thoughtful comment, have a look at the other comments in the post and see what other people are saying and comment on as well, especially if you're not connected to those people. Because again, you know, if you leave a thoughtful comment on that post, you can definitely um, connect with those people as well. That's you know, that's what's happened to me recently. I was, I commented on a main post and then I then commented on a couple of posts within that post. And I did connect with someone who, um, who did turn out to be really interesting. And, you know, we, we're, we're going to set up a call to have a chat. But had I not commented on their comment, I may not have necessarily have seen them or met them through LinkedIn. So it really is worthwhile. And as I said, it's really about adding value and offering a different perspective when you are post, because people want to see, you, they want to see you adding value and that's when they'll become interested in you. Um, and they'll, as I said, they'll likely look at your post and you'll get even more connections. I mean, and I'm talking about this in a way that you're connecting with, people that you don't know on LinkedIn. But as I said, 
we're all working from home at the moment. We're all not in the office. It's a group of people in your organization. I mean, KPMG is a massive organization that's global. So not only um, are you not now restricted to connect with people from um, Canada, you also can be connecting with people across the world. And, you know, and it's that's an easy them on LinkedIn, you both work at the same organization. And again, um, if, if there is someone, um, you know, that you wanted to um, get the attention of, you know, that is p- potentially who is higher up in the organization and you see that they are posting interesting posts, you know, that's a great way by commenting on their posts to get their attention. So, you know, that's really something to bear in mind that, you know, LinkedIn isn't just about connecting with um, people outside of your organization. It's also about really in that visibility and credibility within your organization, especially now that everything is virtual at the moment. So um, it's, it's using that great opportunity. And um, because, as I said, LinkedIn is a professional platform you know, a lot of people are on there and a lot of people are being open. So once you connect with them, it's not just about you just connected with them. Don't just connect with them and run. Do um, connect with them and set up that virtual coffee and get to know them and find out more about them, even if it's 15, 20 minutes. It's a really great idea to do that, to build your network and and keep in touch with them as well. Um, check in with them, you know, send them interesting if, if you find interesting con- content do check in with them hashtags they're another way to find out who um um they're another way to find out um a great way to connect with um people and why do i say hashtags because if someone is posting regular content on hashtags on a topic that you are interested in if you put in that hashtag in the search on LinkedIn, um, you may find some ideal connections there because they're posting interesting content. Again, go in to that feed, comment on those posts, connect with those people, follow those hashtags. If there's hashtags in your industry, um, that's a great way to connect with more people who could possibly be following following those hashtags. Um, it's it's amazing how many um, how many hashtags are you know on LinkedIn, especially unique ones where people are creating content that's unique to them and they have a particular hashtag. Um, it's an easy way to find them and uh, as I said, an easy way to connect with them. So you know that's something to bear in mind as well when you are um, on LinkedIn. Sometimes it feels like you know hashtags are there just for the sake of hashtag sakes, but they are a great way to find information that you're interested in. So, um, you know, if, if there's anything related to your industry or anything that you're interested in, you know, put in a hashtag and search and see the type of posts that have been made and the content. And um, as I said, go in and comment on those posts and connect with them, the people who posted them. I've I've spoken about um, creating um, connections on LinkedIn, commenting on posts um, to create um, to um, co- um, to connect with people, whether that's inside out of inside or outside of your organization. Uh, and you know, another way. I mean, I talked about commenting on posts, but another way is looking for people. If you want to um, say connect with someone. Um, doing a similar role that you're doing or indeed if you are wanting to possibly um, move into uh, move into another direction um, in your career LinkedIn is a great place to go and find those people to talk to them you know that's certainly something that I've done in the past you know when I've wanted to make a pivot you know I've done a search on LinkedIn to see find people who are doing interested in doing and um, connecting with them Um, as I said people are especially now are very open to connecting um, because I think we you know we're just not getting out there of course as much as you know we used to so 
I think people are definitely a lot more open. I've done it. I've had success. You know, not everyone that you connect with necessarily wants to connect with you or meet with you, but that's fine. You know, you just put yourself out there and um, people will, people are open. I mean, and also what I found is when people have reached out to me, likewise, I've been more than happy to talk to someone for 15, 20 minutes. You know, I think it's, it really is a great way to um, build your connections and work on building um, strategic connections. So if there's particular, as I said, if there's particular people with, and you're seeing that they're posting great content, you know, liking their posts, commenting on their posts, sharing their posts, you know, that is a great way for them to notice you and more than likely want to connect with you. Um, and another thing that I didn't say, when you do comment on posts, the headline that I spoke about before, they um, part of your headline will be shown when you are commenting on posts. So, uh, which is great. So, if you know if you've got the headline how you like it, you know that's another way that people can see what you do straight away, even if they're not connected with you. And it it's a way to be strategic. So, um, definitely bear that in mind when you are thinking about your headline and and who you want to connect with. So spoken a lot about commenting on posts and the reason why I went for that first was because I know that some people often say well I don't want to create content you know how can I still build um without creating content on LinkedIn so that's why I spoke about the easy way to build your online presence is as I said commenting on on posts and um commenting on comments you know that's the easiest quickest way to build your online presence and connect with people. But if you wanted to take it a step further, creating your own content um, means even more so that you've developed, you know, that visibility and credibility. You're starting to be seen as a thought leader. And that's not only a thought leader, a thought leader um, on LinkedIn. You know, you are once you're posting on LinkedIn, you're creating your own content there. Um, People within your organization do start taking note of you, especially if you are connected to them. So even if it's not that you're creating content that is um, necessarily um, to do with what you're doing on your day to day, if you are um, creating content and sharing your knowledge on LinkedIn, it's a, um, a fantastic way to do that. And, and I said at the beginning, not a lot of people are doing it. It's um, if you want to, I mean, and it's not about getting all these views and likes, but of course, you know, if you get thousands of um, views on your content, um, that's incredible. But as I said, it's not about doing it to get likes. It's really about being seen by the right people. But when you do, LinkedIn is, of all the platforms, um, easiest way to get um, organic reach without needing to spend money on advertising, which you may or may not want to be, um, as I said, creating your own content. But if you do, it is a great way. LinkedIn is a great way to have content that's going to be seen by a lot of people. So the algorithm on LinkedIn is very um, forgiving. And I don't want to say forgiving, but is it's very it very much helps get your content out there and how can you do that so many different ways to create content on linkedin write articles linkedin have articles you know you can write because you can write long form posts on linkedin but it's it's only got so many characters so if you wanted to write a longer post um, you can write an article on linkedin and the great thing about that is that when you do write an article not only is it when you publish it, it's shown in your feed. It also stays on your profile. So when someone visits your profile, they will see your, they will see the, the previous articles that you have written. So again, great way to showcase thought leadership. Record a video. I mean, I know that's probably scary. It may be may perhaps now it may be a bit more reassuring for people to do as we are everyone is showing up on video on zoom on teams on 
you know, many of the different platforms that we're on. But recording a quick video to say what you do, you know, when I talked about your about section, if you did a quick video, a quick 60 second video on what you do and how you help people, that is a great way to showcase your expertise and um, creative and, and post that on LinkedIn. And you could even keep that on your featured, um, the featured content part of your profile. Um, I know, as I said, it can be a little bit scary. I mean, I, I didn't, I remember when I first started out with video, I was terrified of doing a video um, at first because, you know, it's, you then play it back and then you start to um, really um, focus isn't good. So, I mean, my suggestion to you is to record the video. Don't look at it and post it because you'll be amazed how much positive feedback you would get. And it doesn't need to look perfect. It doesn't need to have the greatest background. Um, I, I mean, I will cover more of that later. It doesn't need to, I mean, when I say the greatest background, it doesn't need to be a polished video. It just needs to be something that you can do on your phone quickly and um, and post it. Um, and once you do it once, you'll do it again and you'll get more comfortable doing it. So highly recommend doing that. As I said, I was certainly nervous about doing it at first and even more so when it got to live video. But again, I remember um, for live video, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying necessarily do live video, but you're doing it anyway, and when live videos in meetings, um, but I mean, if you're not ready to say go there on social media, um, you know, just as I said, record a video. Um, as I, I recommend not watching it and posting it, but you, of course, you can, and if you don't like it, you can always record it again. Creating polls. I don't know if you've seen on LinkedIn, but polls are huge on LinkedIn at the moment. So many of them, um, I guess some are better than others. You know, I guess if the content's good, a lot of people will take the polls. I personally haven't done any polls yet, but from what I've heard, um, you, that's a great way to get engagement. Um, it gets you visible. People notice you, especially if it's a carefully thought out poll. Um, so maybe that's a way to test it if you don't want to write a video a poll is something that's very easy to do and it's a way to test them um, put them um, just creating your own content um, as I said very easy you can close it you can get people to comment on there and um, as I said that's um, a way to build some visibility and especially as they're so popular at the moment so I would say that's something that's a quick a win um, if you wanted to just try creating your own content Another way to do it is you for people's content. You could share articles and videos, interesting videos, interesting articles, and you could just write maybe a couple of sentences or a paragraph of your perspective when you're sharing it. So that's another way. It doesn't, so you don't need to necessarily create your own original content. If you find great articles, um, you can always share them or share videos. Um, and offer your perspective. So that is a great way um, to really get started with creating your own content. And little, much time as you want. Um, you know, as I said, in terms of commenting, you could spend 10 to 20 minutes a day, and that doesn't necessarily have to be every day. You know, it could be a couple of times a week. So it's entirely up to you with how long you're spending on LinkedIn. So moving on to virtual meetings, <clears throat> by now, I guess it's something that um, a lot of people um, are more used to a year in versus, I guess, when we first started, when, you know, when once we um, first went online for work. I mean, before um, last year, it was certainly something that um, I had been on Zoom, I had done webinars on Zoom. So it wasn't much of a learning curve, but I can understand how it definitely could have been. And, you know, if you have been on um, an online platform on camera, um, it can, 
it can um you can it can be um challenging to say the least and probably even now because a year on there's zoom fatigue uh you know there's i mean it's technology is but there's only so much that you want to be looking at your um computer because you're then looking at it all day for work and then because we are physical distancing we're on lockdown at the moment here we are um you know we are being safe and communicating on video to talk to friends and family so sometimes it definitely can be fatigued but um in terms of virtual meetings um some good practices is um write down your ideas before you go into um your meeting um so if you want to come across as someone who's um confidently communicating in the meeting and write down your ideas so that you're and you've got something to refer to because I I know sometimes I've got an idea and I've gone into meetings in the past and I've completely forgotten what I've wanted to say. So writing it down has helped so much because at least then you can get clear on how you want to present it and you can read it out and you know just you just got that idea of um and then you can also write notes in the meeting, something comes to you as well. So that's the first thing I would say. And asking questions, you know, video is so hard sometimes to communicate in terms of someone's connection may be bad. You might not hear them. They may have spoken too fast. So many things that you may not have caught something. So definitely ask a question, ask them to repeat themselves. And if it's something that you can't necessarily do like you know at the time because they are speaking um you know as i said write that down write it in the chat then at least they can see it being clear and precise when you are presenting when you um giving feedback in meetings you know we are spending so much time on um you know these video platforms online you know you, you don't want to be on zoom or teams for longer than you have to be so really be specific, get to present the key points rather than, you know, rolling on because, you know, so many people then are listening, um, people start to get tired, they switch off. Really, um, as I said, be clear and precise and present um, what you are, your ideas. And that goes into having a clear agenda and knowing how long the meeting's going to be. And, you know, there's certainly been meetings where, it's a great idea to time what you are um, going to present. Um, you know, for each agenda item, have a time and then move in, you know, making sure that there is someone, whoever is, is moving people on. Because again, you know, it is tiring looking at the computer and certainly looking at all these squares. So I can understand that. And listen, listen, and listen especially as i said technology um it's hard um to listen and especially when you know you're all on screen and people want to um talk i mean it's really listen intently and if you've got some ideas um rather than interrupting because sometimes when you um you know you're into you may interrupt someone some they lose their train of thought so instead write down what it is that you want to bring up with them. And then you can put that in the chat or write it down. And then when they're finished, you can then ask them the question. Turn your camera on. I mean, and I know, I know some people may not be comfortable with that, but that's, you know, if you don't turn your camera on, it's really losing um, the opportunity because you are you are um physically being visible when you are um when you are on camera you know that's your online presence right there so i highly recommend turning your camera when you are in meetings um because as i said that's a great way to be visible on camera and you're giving the respect to the people who are speaking you know think about you're that presenter and <clears throat> sorry, and you're seeing a whole row of black um, and blacked out boxes and no one's on screen. 
Um, I mean, in situations where there's a webinar that's completely different because you're not seeing people anyway, but when you are on, as I said, on team, on Zoom for meetings, you know, if you can keep your camera on, I mean, fair enough if you've got to turn it off for some of the time, but if you can keep it on for most of the time, and it means that you're connecting with others, you know, people see you, you see them, it's such a great way um, to get that connection, especially as this is the only way that we're doing it at the moment. I mean, and people get to see your face, your gestures, your nonverbal cues. I mean, especially now, um, it's, it's, it's ever so important. I mean, body language um, makes up so much of um, your communication. And so if you've got the camera on, at least people can get to see your body language. I mean, I think at the moment, verbal communication, especially on these online platforms, is even more key now, which it tended to, when you think about the communication um, percentage, verbal was probably the least. But I would say that's definitely increasing more. But if you've got your camera turned on, you know, your gestures and your body language can be seen, your nonverbal cues. And it shows that you're confident with keeping the camera on. And I, I said then, make sure the camera's on only when you want it to be. Because as I said at the beginning about that MP from Quebec who had his camera on and pretty much broadcasted to the House of Commons, um, naked so you know you don't want that so there are times when you definitely want your camera to be off but um for the most part when you are in a meeting do have it on so i just vocal communication is even more so important now because it is so hard with connection and technology and sound quality to hear what someone is saying or indeed what you are saying. So really, really pay attention to your diction when you're speaking. Pronounce your words um, correctly so that um, they, people can understand what you're saying. I mean, it's, it's quite easy to shorten words. Um, but so really, really think about how you're enunciating words on video because it can maybe get lost, um, especially if the sound quality isn't great. And speak at a steady pace. Um, so not too slow, not too fast. You know, have some inflection in your voice. Use some vocal variety to make it uh, more interesting so that, you know, when people are listening to you, they are paying attention. So really focus on your vocal communication because, as I said, it's starting to get even more important now. Um, because um, we are on video and want to be heard and we want to be heard clearly. Rest in face. <laughs> um, this is something I have certainly been guilty of in the past of having a rest in face and you really, really got to um, be careful, um, especially on camera, you don't realise when you could just be mindlessly thinking of something and because you may have a certain face um, that you um, that you uh, that you pull, um, it could be that you look bored or you may look disengaged or indifferent, and you're not. It's just that maybe your mind's wandered, and um, it could just be that that's how your face is. And really, I mean, the good thing about being on camera is that you can see your face. You know, every everyone sees you, and you see yourself. So you know, really bearing in mind when you are on camera, what does my resting face look like? And as I said, that's certainly been something I've been guilty of um, in the past, because as I said, you're mindlessly thinking about something and that's not just even on camera, it's when you're going about your day to day. I mean, once we're out and about these days, we're wearing masks, so no one's not really um, certainly seeing half of your face, but um, when you are on camera, it's thinking, um, how 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 your face is looking and kind of trying to have muscles that you're using when you're smiling and you know as I said certainly something that um I've what I've been working on and you know if if you've noticed you know that your face is looking a particular way when it's resting um you know like um, work on that um so that you're not getting you're not giving that impression that you're not interested. 
Um, let's move on to your personal image on camera. Um, I know that we've certainly gone a lot more casual working from home. And, you know, there have been stories about how people have gotten up and, you know, they've kind of looked smart on the top or look decent on the top, and then they've either been wearing pyjamas or just in their underwear um, uh, because they've just been sitting down and no one can see. And, I mean, and of course, while that is possible, who knows if you may get up and suddenly forget that your camera's on. So really thinking carefully about choosing the right outfits before your virtual meetings um, and certainly on, car, on on camera, you know, wearing solid colors um, because then it just makes it to be seen and the light's not really reflecting too much. And avoiding um, off the shoulder tops, you know, certainly I remember last year I got on Zoom with a friend and she was wearing a strapless top. And, you know, it was kind of, I just saw shoulders. So it looked like, you know, she, you know, it just, like she didn't have um, any clothes on and that was simply because her shoulders were bare. So, you know, it may not necessarily do that for work, but that is bearing that in mind. Um, and, you know, and putting some effort into, you know, combing your hair. Yes, we're at home. I mean, and this may sound obvious. Some people probably, you're probably doing it. But, you know, I mean, I, I do still keep hearing stories about people kind of turn up to online meetings who do literally look like they have just gotten out of bed. And, you know, that's not really portraying a professional image or uh, an online, um, professional online presence. And finding flattering lighting, you know, is <laughs> that can be, um, that can definitely some um, challenging. The best way to do that, though, um, is to try and get as much natural light as possible. I mean, when I'm, I try, I mean, my desk is pretty much in front of a window. I mean, I, I've, I've shifted it today, but it, I mean, but my, I've got a big window by me, even with me shifting my desk. So I really like to have a, um, I really like to have my desk and my laptop set up, my workstation set up in front of a window. Easiest way to get really good light that reflects directly onto your face and you know you're not then worrying about you know trying to make sure that you can get seen um you know the thing that i would avoid is you know don't sit where the light is behind you because all that's just doing is casting shadows on your face and certainly you know when you've got a darker skin tone even more it's shadow so it's really bearing that in mind you know I, I have seen that in zoom meetings where people have um they've sat and the, the light is not reflecting great and then it just means it's you're just looking as a shadow and you know you, again you're not going to be visible so you know really think about your lights and if it's dark you know really use a lamp or a selfie um ring i have a standing lamp and I um, took the the lampshade off and it worked, you know, it may or may not work for you, but get a ring light. Um, you know, it's just really trying different things um, so that so that you you can get the light right. As I said, it can be challenging. And don't forget to um, adjust your screen brightness because sometimes if that's down, you know, certainly that could be, you may have gotten everything else right, but that, that could just be the issue. So it's just really thinking about those things to get flattering lighting so that you are showing up as your best self on camera. And know your angles. I mean, um, speaking to you, I'm standing up today. Um, first time I'm actually trying it. So um, yeah, the, put the, um, you know, put your webcam so that um, your eye level is directly or slightly above um the the webcam so that you can see um you so when you are speaking you are looking straight into the camera so it's my way of you know when you're doing a presentation in person that you're giving the audience eye contact looking directly into the webcam is giving the eye contact to the audience and um you know and if you don't happen to have a standing desk or um, as, or even indeed a laptop stand, you can use some books or boxes 
you know, that's what I'm doing today. I've stacked them up and I think, um, you know, using your phone, you know, use a, a, use a tripod. I mean, and um, if you are presenting, you know, I as I said, I put this in the slide today. If you're presenting um, stand, um, your voice projects better. Um, and, you know, I, I definitely, certainly when I presented in person, I always like to stand. So, um, you know, trying it um, today, um, it's definitely worked. Um, I, I think um, I think definitely have more energy standing than I think than sitting. So give that a try next time if you've not um, done that before. And the background, it really does matter because when you're on camera, you really want the focus to be on you and not people looking behind you. Um, so, you know, it's really choosing the right background. You can see I've just got a plain wall behind me today. So, you know, that's that simple. You can do that. Or even if you do have something behind you, just make sure that things look tidy. Um, so, as I said, they're not distracted looking at you. Or maybe if you, you're in a place where, you know, the background, the way that your background is set up, you know, you, you can't really want to even showcase your house. You could use a screen. I've seen some um, really great screens. Um, there's Zoom, have um, some, you know, backgrounds that you can use. Um, you can download them and use them. A lot of people are using them. And certainly, um, you know, a lot of people are using blurred backgrounds as well. You know, that's becoming popular. Um, so if you can't, for some reason, download some of these um, Zoom backgrounds or anything, a blurred background is alternative again so once people can see what you're doing you can then don't have to be worrying about um what your background is and that they're just focusing on you let me just check the time where are we okay i've gone quite of i'm going over so most wrapping up um and um lastly feeling when you set yourself up so whether that's sitting in a comfortable chair or if you're standing, um, you know, just making sure that you're comfortable when you set up. Try to be in a quiet place as possible. And I know that's not necessarily always possible, you know, working from home, you know, there's kids, there's pets. I mean, I have neither, but yet the puppy across the hall, you know, I the, the noise that travels around my building, I hear the puppy, I hear the traffic outside. Um, so, you know, either way, you can't control the noise, but trying to get it as quiet as possible. I mean, and, and to try and reduce that, you know, I'm wearing earbuds today. Um, so, you know, the, and that is to get the best quality sound for you to hear, for the recording. Um, and then, and also for me, that, that noise, I'm not hearing, hearing the noise um, as much because I've got these in. And Something I always like to have, have your tea, coffee, water set up so that you've got it there. And again, um, you're feeling comfortable. So to conclude, um, that's really your online presence. As again, to summarize, start with your personal brand, defy what your personal brand is, start with your values and beliefs, um, you know, write, a, write how you up and then consistently showcase that message. Use LinkedIn um, if you haven't used LinkedIn. Um, maybe you're on LinkedIn and you've not really paid much attention to it. Um, or even if you are there, um, you know, it's a great way to um, build your online presence, especially now. Um, virtual, great way to connect with people that you may not have connected with before. And as I said, you can connect with people globally. And then also um, thinking about your setup for your online meeting um, and your um, how what your background looks like. Um, you know, going to meetings, being prepared, writing down your thoughts, your questions, listening. You know, it's really thinking about how um, you can show up to those meetings so that you are seen. And as I said, keep your camera on if at all possible. Um, I've given you a lot of things that you could take away today and do. I'm not saying do everything at once, focus on maybe a couple of them and then introduce. 
once you got a new that do a few more so um you know but but what i would say do take something away today and and try so whether it is I would recommend defining your personal brand first, but maybe it is that you decide that you want to get on LinkedIn and start commenting on posts. But um, what I just want to say is take something away from that. And I um, can see that once you do that, you know, you will definitely develop your online professional presence um, from some of um, some of the things that I've spoken about today. As I said, you don't need to do all of them but do try one or two. Um, and I look forward to um, seeing you, connecting with you on LinkedIn. So do feel, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and I also just wanted to give you a heads up if you're on Clubhouse, um, as of Monday the 26th, I'll be doing a room on Clubhouse, 8 p.m. Eastern time um, with a few other um, personal branding professionals. Um, if you are not on Clubhouse and you have an iPhone and you like an invite, connect with me on LinkedIn. I've got several invites that I can invite you. So thank you for listening today. Um, I will go to questions now um, and I will stop sharing my screen. Tamayna, I have a question for you um, before our KPMG employees start to type. Um, so I guess, I think someone like me, right, I don't really like talking too much on LinkedIn, sharing articles, um, writing blogs, etc. I, I sometimes feel a bit shy to do so. So um, I wanted to ask your advice on that. I mean, how would someone like me, who's maybe a bit more introverted, um, you know, get comfortable doing things like that? I sometimes worry about, you know, am I putting too much out there? Um, yeah, so any advice would be great. Uh, I would say start slow. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I spoke, you know, when I spoke about commenting on posts, you know, that's a way just, you know, like if, you know, if there's a particular post that you like, you know, like craft a thoughtful comment, you know, that's something that's easy to do. And, you know, you're not really putting yourself out there. I mean, as long as it's not controversial, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's an easy way to um, just um, put yourself out there without really thinking about, oh, I've, I've got to create content on LinkedIn. And as I said, you know, I, I don't know if you've seen the polls on LinkedIn. Yeah. Another easy way to do it. You know, and it doesn't, it can be, you know, these polls have been on anything like this week's National Volunteer Week. I've yeah. seen polls about that. So it could be on anything. So those are the two things I would say. Comment on a particular post you like or um, create a poll because that's an easy way to create content without it being a, um, a big um, way of um, pulling yourself out there. Great, thank you. I think I have a follow-up question as well. Um, how about internally? I think, um, so we focus on like LinkedIn, but say um, I think it's important for you in organizations within themselves to network, to put yourself out there. Um, do you have any advice or tips on doing that? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it's, I guess it is like LinkedIn. If you've got an internal directory um, at work um, or an intranet, you know, if there's people that you want to meet in your organization, you know, reach out to them, you know, say, oh, I'm really interested in what you do. I would love to have a chat. Do you have 15 minutes to spare to yeah. just chat? You know, just show interest in them. Most people, I mean, if they're busy, they're busy, but most people are open to it. And, you know, if you do put yourself out there and they're not, you know, there's always someone else in the organization that would be open. I wouldn't feel discouraged even if the first person you reach out to says no or ignores you. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. One more question from me. Um, you mentioned Zoom fatigue, and I think that's um, something a lot of people are facing. Um, any tips or advice how to deal with that? Because, yeah, you're on screen all the time, and it's a lot. So how would you recommend just coping with that? I mean, as I said, you know, I, I encourage you when you're in meetings to be on camera. <laughs> I mean, I think with Zoom fatigue, and, and I think a lot of us got that because we're doing it for work, where we're on Zoom with our friends or with our family. I mean, yeah. I am 
you know, I get on the phone a lot more now. If I want to, if I want to talk to my friends or my family, I'll say, get on Zoom. Let's just have a chat on the phone, and that's worked out, you know, just as well. Um, I mentioned Clubhouse. <laughs> you know, that's that's yeah. a really great app. It's not on video. It's an mm -hmm. audio app. You know, it's a really that's a great place to network as well um, without feeling that you've got to have the pressure of being on camera. And, you know, you can, I've, you know, I've met people all over the world on club, the audio aspect of things going forward. And I think not just Clubhouse, other platforms, I think Twitter will be introducing something audio and down the line LinkedIn as well. So I would say go the audio route. You're still keeping in contact but you know, you don't have that extra pressure of, oh, I've got to be on camera. No, for sure, definitely, definitely agree with all those points. I do those things. And I think also take breaks is also important as well. You know, when you're really tired, get off screen, rest, relax. It's important yeah. that you do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I switch off camera at night. Now that's it, I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. this, I'm done, <laughs> you know, because just for that, it just, it does get tiring and it straining does. on the eyes. For sure, no, definitely. Okay, so we do have 14 minutes left. Um, so KPMG employees, if you do have any questions, now's your time to speak. <laughs> I think people are shy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so if we don't have any questions, mm -hmm. then I guess we can close the event. So um, I'd like to say, so on behalf of Coffee, thank you, Charmaine, for giving such a, you know, excellent presentation. And I'd also like to thank um, you know, our partners at KPMG. So I'll mention um, Tamika, Tarasai, and Alex as well. So thank you as well. And um, to the employees, remember that if you do want to become a member of Coffee, get in touch with both Alex and um, Tamika. And then, um, yep, that's it. So... 30 minutes left, giving you some time back and I'm going to end the event. We will be sending a survey at the end, so please do um, fill in your opinions and you know, how you felt the event went. And I just want to wish everyone a great evening and um, take care.